this is what I want you to do. I want you to go below, subscribe to the new channel, and then watch the current video. And then actually go ahead and watch all of the videos because the new Hustlers Kung Fu is all about business, education, mindset, and money. That's the only thing that's over there. That's the only thing that's going to be over there. So go ahead and subscribe today. What I want to talk about is how black folks are essentially set up for failure. I got a video I did, uh, if I can remember to put it up here, I'll put a screenshot of it, of the failure of white people. The average white person isn't stunningly successful. I've known this for years. You want to know why I knew this? Let's go back to the Craigslist protocols. Let's go back to the women that we're dating. I was dating a lot of white women who would talk horribly about white men. I was getting firsthand accounts of how white men just, you know, once again, there, there's layers of white men. But the average white man isn't really doing well, isn't really making exceptional money. Now, these exceptional white man, and there's different because there are so many white people, there is this perception that all white people are doing well when it's a select group of white people who are doing well. Right now, there's a ton of white people who are on opioids because life is so bad. They're literally killing themselves with drugs. And this is a huge, huge issue. And this is something that I've known for years and years and years. And this is why I never get into the white black conversation of, well, we cannot do anything because we black because I empirically know better. <laughs> I know better something else that happens. Let's talk about the red pill movement. What is the red pill movement? Who created the red pill movement? A bunch of losers. This is who created the red pill movement. Red pill movement wasn't created by men a.k.a. white men who were doing very well with women. So this red pill movement, MGTOW movement, is a movement created by losers. And guess what? Red pill is one of the biggest things in the black community, a movement that was created by white men who were losing. And, you know, why do I say this? Why do I go this? Because essentially... One of the things that I have never really emphasized is I'm a problem solver. I was in the storage auction business and I didn't have a lot of free time. So I came up with the Craigslist protocols to solve my dating companionship problems. I didn't whine. I, there, at the time, I don't think there was a red pill. Uh, I don't even think that, I don't even think men were talking about dating and relationships in the way that they do today. Because essentially, this whole conversation of men who are struggling with women is a movement created by losers. This is why. And essentially, you know, red pill, you know, the last time I talked about passport bros, I had so many people angry at me. All right. Let me go ahead and say this. More than likely, if you're a passport bra, you're going to a lower economic economy so you can trick off. Your money goes much further in the Dominican Republic. Your money goes much further in Brazil. Your money goes much further in Colombia. Your money goes much further in the Philippines. Your money goes much further in Thailand. So essentially, you have altered yourself out of the American system because you cannot afford to trick off here so you go to these places where your money goes further and you could temporarily take them off or two off and go trick off in these other countries. What, where am I going with this? The movements, the wave lengths, the methodology, the messaging that's coming from a losing community is one of the reasons that black folks are all over it because black folks are captivated by losing. Like right now, there, there's a ton of talk about Diddy. Tons and tons of talk about Diddy. And, you know, all the stuff he was doing, the sexually stuff. And, you know, there was someone who was saying that you cannot rise to the level of income that Diddy has risen to without being evil. Warren Buffett is evil. Warren Buffett has like a hundred times more money than Diddy. Diddy. 
a hundred times. Warren Buffett evil, Bill Gates evil, Elon Musk is evil. Um, dang, Mark Zuckerberg's evil. Jeff Bezos, all these folks are evil. They have way more money than Diddy. So this correlation of and I'm going somewhere with this connection. It was Charleston White who said this on the show, that when you get money and high levels of money, it's inherently going to make you evil. This is something I think that a lot of black folks are deeply committed to not making money, not building businesses. And this is why I feel that black folks are prey to the scams, the hookup, the CPN gateway. And I just see this because one of the reasons that I just don't really mesh with a lot of the messaging online is because the messaging is created by losers. This is one of the reasons I've said all the things I said about the red pill movement, because red pill is a movement created by men who have lost with women. When I was running the Disruptive Male series, I was proven I wasn't losing with women. So I didn't, ha and this is something else. Rest in peace to Alan Roger Curry. Alan wasn't losing with women. And if you notice something, Alan never had all of this angst and hate and envy and bad mouthing and mockery of women. They j just didn't. They just didn't. And Essentially, what you're going to find out, the men who are winning in life will have a different level of messaging. And this is why the 10% rock with me and the 90% who've been listening to losers, uh, they don't rock with me because they're t internalized the message of losers, red pill losers. Uh, and essentially, if I were to come on YouTube and just tell what I call high tall tale lies, like I'm really wealthy, but never give you proof, never give you examples, never provide any receipts. Just keep saying I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. Just show a few things of success. Most of you would believe that, but when I consistently, because one of the things like when I had the rental car business and I had people, it's like, oh, he's financing those cars. Then I got thumb shots of me showing all the titles because you get the title of a car when you pay cash for a car. That actually just made people even more mad because once again, one of the reasons that I've been able to make so much money is I've been able to solve a lot of problems. I've been able to solve problems for myself. I've been able to solve problems for other people in the storage auction business. And you know, this is something else too. Uh, people, I, I, you know, yeah, yeah, the storage auction business was a long, long time ago. Tell us about something new. The, the principles, like holding companies, I've been talking about holding companies since 2015, 2016. I've been talking about starting businesses since I started the YouTube channel. But these people who are losers are looking for an easy pathway or the methodology. Like, okay, uh, the, the, the person who came over to the new channel to spread his misery. Talking about, you know, I was talking about trading. All right, so the other day I did something. I took like three hours and I went to the internet and I went to Reddit and I went to forums and this is something that overwhelmingly came up if you do the research, if you want to go and put trading Reddit, trading Google, that 90% of the people who are trying to trade lose money. This was a consistent message from Reddit. This was a consistent message from some Facebook groups. But you have people who come to the internet that make you think that trading is so easy. Uh, there's a girl, she saw me, I learned how to trade in two days and I made all this money in two days. And I begin to understand that the 90% values a pretty lie versus the cold, hard truth. And all of this stuff, like, you could, you could literally, these people, because once again, I made this conversation. I had this conversation. Um, you cannot be dead broke and then become a millionaire in two years. I 100% don't believe that's possible. Why? Number one, 
If you're dead broke, you have bad money management habits. That's the first thing. Because it's 2024 in America, and if you're broke, that's your fault. Why do I say that? There are so many ways to make money. There, but once again, you will work. And this thing has come up like many people have made getting up, going to work at your job is a form of slavery. Why is this? People see uh, people like me. Uh, the year that I made all that money, I wasn't working 40 hours a week. And they, but they see the 60th chapter, the 70th chapter. But if we go back to chapter five through 10, I was working 12, 16 hours a day in the storage auction business. And, you know, because uh, there was no YouTube, there was no internet, you couldn't actually see me doing that. But that's what I did. And that hard work that I put in to business in the beginning is the reason that I was able to realize these personal gains. Because essentially, and hear me on this, the decision that you make today is going to have repercussions and it's going to have a yield 10 years in the future. So it's 2024. If you want 30, 34 to be great, you need to be working on decisions right now that are going to make 30, 34 great. If you just kind of sit on your hands and I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to start a business, I'm not going to manage my credit, I'm not going to do any of this stuff. And essentially, you will just put yourself in the position where you're just going to be in the same spot that you are. Because there's something that's happening right here in America. Housing prices are continuing going up. Right now, there's a number of YouTube channels that are blatantly lying to you, telling you you shouldn't buy a house. The, the housing prices are going to crash. I remember 20, 2008, 2009, 2010, where people had mortgages, where their house on paper was significantly worth less than the mortgage that they had on that house. Now, remember, I was dating this girl. She was an attorney. And she was just like, you know, uh, we had this conversation over lunch. She's like, should I keep paying for my house? It's worth less than one pay. And I said, look, just keep paying. Don't mess up your credit. And at some point in the future, the market will correct itself. And recently, recently, she just sold that house. And this is about 15 years in the future. And she was able to sell her house for almost three times for what she paid for it. So it was a good plan to go ahead and continue to pay for it. But once again, when you get into the position of solving problems, when you put yourself in the position where you actually can do things to solve problems, this is one of the reasons that like this person who came over to the new channel and like I've been saying, look, if you don't want to start a business, it's cool. You don't want to have a holding company, it's cool. You don't want to build business credit, it's cool. Don't come over there. But guess what? They're running over there with the same mess because one of the things is, and this is one of the reasons I get so much hate because I'm a problem solver. Um, I've actually solved a lot of my problems. Income problem. I used to be broke. I used to be just like y'all. I used to work a regular job. I used to struggle with money. I didn't have no money in the bank. I didn't, I didn't have bad credit, but I didn't have a lot of credit. And I solved that problem by creating a business. And then I saw my dating situation by creating the Craigslist protocols. And I literally, whenever I have a problem, I, the first thing I need is sit down and figure out a way that I can solve it, not to sit back and become a, a moaner. Because like I said, Red Pill was a movement founded by white men who were losing with women. And so many men have embraced this loser mentality. Once again, it's loser mentality because it's 2024. If you have a problem with women, if you have a problem getting with, with a woman, there are other internal issues that come to play that you need to work on solving them first to make getting with women become quite easy. 
Because I don't think getting a woman in 2024 is very hard. I don't think it's hard at all. And I don't think getting a woman, meeting a woman, and having the woman fall in love with you and cherish and worship you, I don't even think that's hard. But literally, based upon the Red Pill movement, a movement created by white men who were losing, we have a bunch of men, especially... Um, I remember a friend of a friend's kid who was like six years old was asking me, where's your bigotti? This six-year-old knew who Andrew Tate was. So the message has filtered quite down to the point where six-year-olds, even before he has a dating life, even before he starts getting involved with women, that this messaging has filtered down by losers. And Dr. K, go ahead and Google Dr. K. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, gamer something healthy gamer gg and he talks about these issues and he goes really really deep into it and he was on the show called uh diary of a ceo and he talked about you know men are killing themselves and you know men have issues men have problems and the only people who are listening to these men who have problems are the men over in the toxic masculinity sphere which and this is where things get dangerous because you're listening to a message because, you know, Andrew Tate, I don't know a whole bunch about Andrew, Andrew Tate, but I know some things. And literally, this is a man who pimped women through Internet porn and cam shows, and he is celebrated for that. Yet the Internet literally tried to cancel me for fucking a young girl. Literally, it's fun. And, you know, and I, as I sit there and I think about that, Andrew Tate, who is half black, but he he presents white. Andrew and Tristan Tate present white, even though their father's black, they present white. And one of the things I see is if I had came at it from a loser perspective, because, you know, my whole thing was being a dominant man. And that right there to the 90 percent who literally need a woman to have a good life because they need her income that gets lost upon the 90% because they don't want to be dominant men. They don't want to be uh, problem solvers. There's someone I respect, and he, he said something in the video where he and his wife was looking for a girlfriend, and I meant to message him. I was like, don't ever say that again because you will show that you have a position where you are dominant, where you own and run your life, and you put this message out to the 90%, they will hate you because, you know, literally, I've had women I've dated suggest threesomes. I've never brought it up. They have brought up threesomes. Well, my girlfriend, she thinks you're cute, and, you know, we were, I mean, literally. But once again, we have a huge, huge swath of men who are not having sex. We have a huge swath of men who are not able to date. We have a huge swath of men who are lonely. And then when I come over here on the internet bragging, you know, AKA talking about my life, talking about having a successful dominant life, I'm bragging because their lives are so fucking miserable. They're miserable. They, they can't do anything. And th this whole loser collective because this is something else, kind of going back to the failure of white people. Um, I've been saying that for years. I do not idolize or epitome, you know, because the average, once again, the average white person is not really doing that well financially. Their average white person isn't. But for some reason, the loser, well, part of this is, if I go ahead and intellectually dissect it, these people have never been around successful people, so they don't know how successful people move. There was an article of like why billionaires don't retire. And, uh, you know, it was on How Money Works, the YouTube channel. And they were talking about a video talking about why millionaires don't retire. Why billionaires don't retire because a lot of billionaires, the majority of their money is in company stock. And if you know anything about company stock, Let's say if Jeff Bezos, who owns a lot of stock, if he was unload his all of his Tesla stock in one day, right, that would crash the price of Tesla stock. Um, Jeff Bezos, he actually went on a selling spree because essentially what these CEOs do is they create windows 
and they project when they're going to sell a certain amount of stock. They cannot sell a bunch of their stock immediately. They have to sell it in shares in sections and they can't sell too much too fast because that would literally crash the price of the stock. So, and also, you know, Elon Musk, let's, let's go. Warren Buffett is 92, 93 years old and he's still working. And this man is a billionaire. The man is sitting on at one point, I don't know if he's still sitting on it, but he was sitting on 130 billion in cash. And I really thought about it. Why stop working? You're, you're Warren Buffett, you run your life, you have all these things that are going on, you're the king of your business, why stop working? And I guarantee you, Warren Buffett is not working 80 hour weeks. I guarantee you he's not working 80 hour weeks. But once again, when you look at the whole thing of people who are winning in it versus the people are losing because like, you know, we're having a really good conversation over on the new channel about wealth. And honestly, a lot of you guys in the 90% don't know what wealthy people are because once again, going back to that comment that this, this person who literally left this channel and went over to the new channel. And I'm going to tell you exactly why they did that. Um, it was like, you claim you made all this money from your YouTube channel and you have 147. And I've literally talked about the 147,000 subscribers come from different sectors of different content. A lot of people came from the, about 50,000 were from the storage auction days. And then I had this moment of disruptive mail and a lot of people kind of came in from that. They came from disruptive mail to this channel. So they're storage auction people, they're disruptive mail people. And there's the, the group of people who came when the internet tried to cancel me. Uh, this is a segmented audience. If I had 147,000 people who were interested in business and starting business and money management and getting your credit profile straight and doing all this other stuff, my videos would be getting 30 to 150,000 views per video. But because I have such a mixed mash audience, very mixed mash. And this is why I started the new YouTube channel. And this is why I'm saying, Hey, if you don't want to start a business, Hey, stay away from that channel. Don't come over to that channel. Right? Cause I want to create and it, like, I think I have 600 subscribers and my best video over there is 1700 views, 1700. So what's going to happen in the future and mark my words, six months in the future, you're going to see a totally different output from that channel compared to this channel. And I have no clue to what I'm going to do with this channel. I don't know if I'm just going to stop posting. I, I have no clue. But once again, you have people who want to literally keep on with these losing propositions because this is why trading the average person who gets in Forex trading, day trading, options trading, loses money. 90% of these people lose money. Now there's organizations and there's large corporations that have very skilled PhD level people in their trading teams. And these, these, this is who you're competing against. You're competing against a company that has billions and you're kind of getting in there with your hundred dollars, 200, 300, $400. And you're going to like literally trick, take them down. And this is why when the wall street bets things was going on, with this group of traders who were buying this stock that the big corporations were pushing the price down. They were buying the, the stock and pushing the price up to create momentum. And this became a big thing because essentially you had all of these retail trailers kind of duking it out with the corporate traders. And essentially some of the corporate traders moved over to the retail side because they, they, they knew what the game was. They knew what the game was. They knew how to play the game. They had the money to play the game. And this is why, because there wasn't enough money on the retail side to turn the market. Some of the corporate money went over to the retail side because they saw what was happening and they got in and they were able to make money. That's the only reason that happened with the Wall Street bets. It wasn't the public retail traders who actually did anything. It was that corporate money that went over there. But once again, most of the people are not financial literate and it's like, yeah, you know, we're regular traders and we took it to Wall Street. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You, you, you didn't have enough money. But the people with the money came in, got on the side of the retail traders and made more money because they knew the game. But once again, 
you know, I, I literally see all of these people who are talking about stocks and investing. And even if you had bought a lot of Tesla when Tesla was on the rise, you still would have had to have a lot of money to make a lot of money with Tesla. Because when Tesla got up to 400 bucks, and if you, 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 you needed to have a lot of money, this is not something you can do. You know, if you had $100,000 in Tesla, and I don't have my phone on me, but I'm not going to go get my phone. But yet a hundred thousand dollars were for Tesla. That would have been like sixty seven thousand shares, I would believe. Let's go ahead and say yes, yeah, sixty seven thousand shares at sixty seven dollars per share times one thousand. That would have been six hundred and seventy thousand dollars that you would have needed to have to have 67,000 shares of Tesla. And then when Tesla did a 265 upswing, that's when you would have saw 2.65 million. Well, actually more than that, more than that. That's when you would have saw some real money because you would have had to have real money to actually see the real appreciation. The, the guy who came in and bought Bed Bath & Beyond had $25 million. That's what he was working with. He, had, he was working with $25 million. But once again, people are not looking for folks who actually solve problems. They're not looking for folks who solve problems. They're looking for people who are pretty much just like them, just a few steps above them. And, you know, th this is the problem with the black community. This is a huge, huge problem with the black community. The black community chases losers, not winners. This is why I get hated on, but your boy Pookie, he gets out of prison, we're going to throw him a party. Losers looking after losers. It is what it is.